Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to do another example, but here we're going to use a simplified technique. Look at the table, right? What we have here. The first line represents the forces caused by each segment of the total load. The reason why we have two boxes right there is because we actually can divide this or should divide this into two segments. We have a rectangular segment and we have a triangular segment. So we can calculate the total force load contribution by the rectangular segment and by the triangular segment and place those right here. So this would be segment one and this here is segment two. This becomes one and two. Then we have to calculate the centroid for each of the two segments, the x coordinate of the centroid because we're not concerned about the y coordinate. Then we try to find the total moment caused by the the total force load multiplied times the unified centroid and we'll see that when we come back over here to the definition of the x coordinate of the centroid of a distributed load is equal to the integral of the x coordinate of each individual piece of the load multiplied by the dA. Remember how we did on the previous example we got a small little segment called dA we found the centroid of that small little segment, we multiplied the x coordinate of the centroid times the a, we integrated that to get the total moment, which is the total force multiplied times the centroid of the total load distribution, and we divided that by the total force. So in the fourth box, we're going to calculate the total force, and then when we divide the total moment by the total force, we get the x coordinate of the centroid. So watch and see how we do that. First of all, we have a rectangular section here. The height is 40 pounds per foot and the length is 18 feet. So this becomes 40 pounds per foot multiplied times 18 feet. So this becomes equal to 40 times 18 is 720 pounds. So 720 pounds is the load provided by the rectangular portion of the load distribution. Then we do the same for the triangular portion. That's a triangle. We get one half times the base, 18 times the height would be 160 to minus 40 or 120. That will give us the total force contribution of the, of the triangular part of the total force load. That's 9 times 120, we get 1,080. 1,080 pounds, so 720 pounds for the rectangular section, 1,080 pounds for the triangular section. That gives us the force contribution of each segment of the force load. Next, we're going to find the x-coordinates of the centroids of the two sections. Since here this is a rectangular section, it should be right halfway in between. That means it's 9 feet away from point A. For the triangular section, we know that it's one-third from the base, from the high point right here, one-third from the left, or two-thirds from the right. Since this is 18 feet, two-thirds from 18 feet is 12 feet. So the centroid for the triangular portion is at 12 feet. To find the total moment, we multiply the force distribution times the x coordinate of the centroid and we do the same here and we add it together. So in this case we'll get 720 pounds times 9 feet plus 1080 pounds times 12 feet. I should have made the boxes a little bit bigger because I want to put the answer in there. 720 times 9 plus 1080 times 12 equals, we get 19,000, let me make the box a little bit bigger, we get 19,440 foot-pounds. That's the total moment caused by the load distribution multiplied or acting at the centroid. We don't know yet where the centroid is, we'll find that in just a moment. That is of course also equal to the moment at A. We have to have a counterbalance here, so as this beam is being pushed in this direction, the moment of A is holding that in the opposite direction by putting a moment in the opposite direction, equaling out the moment caused by the force load acting through the centroid. Now we need to find the total force. Well, the total force is simply the sum of these two. In that case, that would be 720 pounds 
plus 1,080 pounds. Add it together, that gives us 1,800 pounds, which is the total load on the beam. And finally, to find the excentroid, we divide the moment by the total force, in this case, 19,440 foot-pounds, divided by the total force, 1,800 pounds, and we get 10.8 feet, which is the location of the centroid. Visually, you can then see that 10.8 feet, that places us right about here. Here's the centroid, and the total force, force total, is acting through the centroid, force total. That causes a moment equal to 19,440 19, foot-pounds, which is counterbalanced by the moment at A. And the entire load is also carried by A, therefore the force at A pushing upward is equal to the force total pushing downward, 1,800 pounds, so this is equal to 1,800 pounds acting in an upward direction. The moment here equals 19,440 19, foot-pounds acting in a counterclockwise direction at A. See how much easier it is if we come up with a box like this. It really leads you through kind of a menu of things to do. Find the total force of each segment, then find the x coordinate of the centroid of each segment, multiply these together, multiply those together, add them all up, that's the total moment. Find the total force by adding up the individual four segments, then divide this by this to get the x coordinate of the centroid of the complete load. Makes it a lot easier when we do it that way. If you want to see some more examples, stay tuned. I'll show you some other cases in which we can use the very same technique.